Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back. Mm, so, uh, we just uh, talked about uh, details of the hydrogen oxygen, uh, oxygen uh, um, uh, reactions and the explosive uh, limits of hydrogen oxygen uh, mixtures and uh, the details of hydrogen oxidation essentially. And uh, then uh, we discussed about carbon monoxide oxidation and uh, now we will consider general considerations of hydrocarbon oxidation. Now, uh, the most important reactions in a hydrocarbon oxidation is as we have discussed that is uh, of course, the chain initiation that is the formation of H, HO2. Uh, H is as we discussed is a very active radical and its formation is, in, is intrinsic and it is very, very important uh, towards, uh, uh, towards further propagation of the reaction because these active radicals attack further uh, 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 incoming uh, fuel molecules and oxygen etcetera. And then this is these two are the most important reactions this H plus O2 going to OH plus O and of course, uh, that is the key chain branching step and the key heat release step is CO plus OH going to CO2 plus H. Uh, now, hydrocarbon oxidation uh, is hierarchical. What that means is that, uh, that whenever whatever large your fuel molecule is, suppose you are talking about butane, propane, uh, butane, uh, uh, octane, uh, don and dodecane which is as we discussed is essentially a surrogate for uh, or a representative fuel of, of uh, jet fuels. Mm. So, nevertheless uh, these fuels does not uh, react with oxygen and it uh, uh, does not directly go undergo oxidation what they do is that these large hydrocarbon molecules they break down into smaller C1, C2, C3 fragments. Okay. This now this initial fuel breakdown is very fast. Hence, these are not rate limiting and but the important thing is that it is essentially then no matter how large the fuel is of course, there are complicated species formed, but essentially the most important part is essentially the reaction of this C1, C2, C3 fragments and reaction of H, O2, OH plus O plus O and so on and so forth. So, this so in a very large complex uh, uh, fuel uh, for example, with n can the methane chemistry is still very important because methane chemistry is essentially governed by the uh, the C1 chemistry okay. and also like hydrogen chemistry is very important because this kind of uh, hydro uh, this H will be formed and those will react with O2 to form OH plus O and so on and so forth. So, um, when you want to construct a big uh, reaction mechanism of a, or the or reaction mechanism of a big fuel, we first need to understand the reaction mechanism of the small fuels that is why hydrogen oxidation is very important, C oxidation is very important and then for next we will study methane oxidation which is also very important. Of course, methane is an important fuel in natural gas as you know and of course, hydrogen is also a very clean fuel and the hydrogen is even more important because you see it does not produce um, uh, CO2 which is an important greenhouse gas and uh, which is believed to be uh, which is uh, of course, known to be important for climate change. So, because hydrogen does not produce CO2 it is very uh, important uh, as a clean fuel, but of course, it has you see that it, it behaves uh, it is explosive and it is uh, very strongly diffusive and explosive over large range of temperature and pressures and that is the it is uh, prohibits it is uh, large scale use actually. So, uh, once again uh, the dominant uh, we can say that the dominant hydro uh, high temperature chemistry is essentially governed by this H2O2 chain and this dominant low temperature chemistry is governed by the HO2 uh, is governed by this HO2 chemistry. Okay. So, that is the idea that we will follow. So, methane oxidation can be schematically represented in this uh, diagram where methane essentially goes to form CoH3. So, these diagrams essentially are that these arrows indicate the process that is more important, this thick arrows in indicate a process which is more important whereas, these thin arrows uh, this, this indicate the process which are less important, but we can uh, we will discuss this in more details rather than going to a schematic. So, first important thing is that uh, how does uh, uh, CH4 essentially breaks down. The ones once again uh, the the most important step is initiation, but before that we should say that there are two in two um, uh, two two uh, initiation routes. And so these we first talk about the initiation reactions. So the first is the high temperature route for uh, methane breakdown. So methane breaks down essentially by CH4 plus M goes to CH3 plus H plus M. Once again, the formation of this H radical is very important as we discussed so because as soon as the H radical is formed, the key chain branching step that we saw this H1 
uh, reaction in the hydrogen oxygen. So, immediately that can happen and that can attack the fuel, the oxidizer, the oxygen molecule and it can form OH and O. And now this OH and O, this CH4 can react with H, OH and O and O, o and OH and form CH3 into this thing. And uh, uh, again, but we see that uh, that uh, the, the uh, parallelly, if we just consider this reaction CH4 plus H becomes CH3 plus H2. Okay. Uh, so, this very energetic hydrogen radical is leads to the formation of a less energetic methyl radical CH3. As a result, there is, there is too much, uh, if you see the ignition delay correlations of methane, you will see that the methane uh, comes with a, uh, with a positive exponent. That is, the more methane is produced, the larger is the ignition. The more, there is more, the larger the concentration of methane, the larger is the ignition delay, which is counterintuitive because methane is a fuel. But um, because this uh, hydrogen uh, uh, atom, this hydrogen, very energetic hydrogen radical that is produced, uh, that reacts with methane to form, um, uh, to form this less energetic CH3, uh, this becomes a retarding step. But these are the initiation reactions. The low temperature route is that the CH4 with will react with O2 to form the CH3 plus HO2. CH4 plus HO2 goes to form CH3 plus H2O2 hydrogen peroxide and hydrogen peroxide plus M goes to form this chain branching OH plus OH plus M. So, this is the low temperature route. Oxidation path. Now, uh, what happens then is that uh, then there is continuous stripping of hydrogen uh, from this uh, C meth here from this uh, as you see here this uh, CH3 is formed. Okay. And uh, uh, this uh, was uh, this there, this is essentially from CH4 it from CH3 and from CH2 it will from CH2 and there is this continuous stripping of hydrogen and eventually it will be oxidized uh, by the CO um, uh, by the uh, uh, will CO will be formed and then CO plus OH will go to react and will form CO2 plus H. Okay, so these. Uh, um, uh, uh, these uh, these uh, steps will continue to uh, basically uh, strip the the, the CH, uh, CH4, CH4 to CH3 and CH3 to essentially CO and CO then to CO2 and this is the oxidation path and of course a hydrogen that is the H atom that is formed will oxidize leading to HO2. So, this, this is continuous stripping path. But then there is also a growth path because this you will see that if you consider the GRI MEC uh, meth methane uh, reaction mechanism that is pretty big in size. Okay. So, what happens is that the CH3, CH3 can also combine and it can in presence of a third body it can, it can form C2H6. So, from one carbon it forms two carbons. So, in the methane uh, reaction mechanism these larger molecules of this uh, C2H6 these are also important and this becomes essentially a part of the ethane oxidation path and it can also form uh, CH3 plus CH3 it can also form C2H5 plus H and it can go latched onto the ethyl oxidation path. So, as a result this re hydrocarbon reaction mechanisms are not comp are, are very co are complex because on one hand you see there is stripping of H to form CO2 uh, plus H on the other hand you will uh, 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 there is also continuously um, there is also a growth path in which larger and larger molecules are involved and eventually this large larger molecules will be broken down into smaller fragments and then it then will again go to uh, CO plus OH and go to CO2 plus H. Now, that goes about uh, that is about methane oxidation. Okay. What about oxidation of larger uh, or, or ignition of larger hydrocarbons? Now, we discussed what ignition delay time is and that is a very important process and uh, but the if you see the ignition difficulty it essentially it depends on two things that is the CH bond energy okay. and you will find that methane is the hardest to ignite followed by ethane followed by propane. And uh, this is uh, what is shown here in this temperature uh, pressure curve that uh, methane is methane becomes explosive only in this regime at very high temperature and high pressure. Whereas propane is ethane is then follows then and then propane is this uh, shows a very complicated behavior. The probe the complicated behavior of propane essentially comes from uh, mm, this uh, can be characterized by two things. One is called the cool flame. Um, and another is a negative temperature coefficient. Both are very interesting things and we will discuss a little bit about that. 
and all as uh, this, uh, this, this region of cool flame where essentially we will see that instead of a, a bright blue flame uh, or the normal flame we will see a blue in color if it is a premixed flame which essentially comes from the hydroxyl and the C2 radicals. But in a cool uh, flame you will see that there is lot of emission by this formaldehyde radicals and which gives that a very pale blue color okay. And uh, this is different from the normal uh, hydro normal high temperature flames as we will discuss later. And also the corresponding phenomenon in ignition delay is that this ignition delay of N heptane where you see this negative temperature coefficient that is if you increase uh, temperature, temperature is increased in this direction okay. So, uh, uh, in this direction temperature, uh, temperature increases. Uh, Uh, 800, uh, 1000, 1200. But so, if you see that uh, normally we think that if temperature increases this ignition delay time will be just like this. That is after temperature increases ignition delay time also increases because it is clear that the chain branching reactions are promoted. Okay. Uh, but you see in this kinds of com larger fuels like high hep N heptane etcetera this uh, ignition delay first, uh, mm, uh, first decreases. Uh, then again it increases or it has a plateau region then then it decreases. So, this is called the negative temperature coefficient phenomena. But it happens at a very uh, interesting range you see this uh, 700 to 1000 Kelvin which is often the inlet uh, often the temperature at which um, fuel and air mixes in practical air breathing propulsion engines like in a gas turbine engine or in a scramjet combustor. Now, then we need to know some rules about uh, of, of essentially which uh, bonds we are talking about bond energy that is uh, we, we said that uh, methane is most uh, least explosive uh, at a given temperature pressure and uh, propane is most explosive because of the CH bond energy. The bond energy of CH4 is highest and then it is uh, less is uh, you have say uh, C2H6 is uh, has uh, less bond energy and then the C3H has even lesser bond energy. So, uh, so, the propane is more easy to break and easy to ignite. Now, the beta scission, scission rule we need to understand is that the beta scission rule tells us that uh, the oxidation of an aliphatic that is this uh, straight chain alkanes is usually initiated by the abstraction of a hydrogen atom. As you see that uh, what the stripping down of this uh, uh, hydrocarbons means essentially by hydrogen atoms is essentially by this hydrogen abstraction process. So, CH4 plus uh, if you go into this reaction uh, uh, CH4 plus M uh, becomes CH3 plus H plus M. So, this is a hydrogen abstraction uh, reaction where CH4 is stripped off from it is uh, hydrogen and this hydrogen becomes a free radical and the, so that it becomes free to react and the go free to attack other fuel molecules. Okay. Uh, so, uh, the oxidation of an um, uh, aliphatic so uh, then the question is that uh, now if you have uh, this uh, this uh, uh, this kind of an uh, methyl uh, or, a, or a butyl group uh, where you have uh, this uh, unpaired electron uh, in this uh, this is a propyl group uh, then um, or this propyl radical then which C C bond is the weakest. The rule says is that the beta scission rule says, says that the oxidation of aliphatic is usually initiated by the abstraction of an hydrogen atom of the molecule yielding at a primary propyl radical and the beta scission rule tells that the bond that breaks the bond that will break is usually the one that is one, one is breaks is one removed from the radical side. So, this is the radical side. So, the most uh, the bond that is most prone to break up is essentially the one that is one removed that is not this one one removed from the radical side which is this one. Now, why because you see that in more invariably this uh, pair presence of this unpaired electron essentially strengthens this bonds mm, the C C bond which is about 100 uh, these are in uh, uh, arbitrary units, but then in comparison then this C C bond becomes weaker and as a result it becomes prone to back and that is the beta scission rule. Okay. So, a C C bond is essentially weaker than a C H bond, but uh, um, the C H dissociation has a higher day factor and as a result this C C breaking happens at low temperature where a C H breaking happens at high temperature. Now, what is uh, uh, cool flame and NTC phenomena? Uh, as we have seen that uh, when it comes to like propane and higher hydrocarbon, it shows something like a, um, there is a regime uh, in which there is which is uh, called a cool flame and it where it shows this NTC phenomena. Now, the explosion uh, process if we remember it depends on the initial attack of the hydrocarbon molecules by oxygen and thereby through active radicals. Okay. 
uh, the difference in the bond energies is translated into the difference in the activation energy of these reactions. Now, methane uh, as we have seen that uh, previously uh, what we discussed is that the methane uh, uh, varies smoothly, ethane varies uh, also smoothly, but higher aliphatic uh, hydrocarbons this cool flame um, it has a complex behavior. Okay. It is a complex explosion PT diagram, it is this uh, non monotonic diagram like this. So, that is what is uh, makes it interesting. So, why does it happen is that uh, for hydrocarbon flames of propane and larger hydrocarbons in the low to intermediate temperature regime, increasing temperature can lead to slowdown in the reactivity of the mixture and that is manifested by this pale blue emissions coming from formaldehyde. Okay. So, um, in this thing uh, if we just uh, take this uh, take at a constant pressure if we just uh, have 5 stations at different increasing temperature in this regime map what we see is that at point A there is no observational change in temperature that is mild oxidation this is not relevant for combustion. Mm, uh, then explosion occurs uh, uh, at point B, but it is uh, characterized by this observation of pale blue emission characteristics of peroxides and formaldehyde. The green C2 and the blue violet CH emission are characteristics of the high temperature regime and this is called the cool flame regime. Okay. And then once we increase it to C, uh, increase in temperature slows down the reaction because of heat loss and uh, it is also because of certain production of certain other radicals that will come and this is essentially the negative temperature coefficient regime. Okay. Uh, it is essentially the chain as we will see that is essentially the chain branching reactions that will be stopped and as a result of this uh, it becomes a non explosive. And then as we increase it to higher temperature it results in explosion because of the normal uh, promotion of the chain branching reactions at uh, H plus O2 goes to OH, OH plus O at high temperatures. So, what is the mechanism of this cool flame and this NTC? Now, this is important because as we saw that uh, even in the previous slide in the in Dodecan slide if we go back. Uh, Mm, now also that uh, mm, uh, that uh, yeah, this is the slide that uh, mm, this is the NTC behavior this was for N this was for normal dodecan yes as we remember that uh, the dodecan was uh, was essentially the surrogate fuel for kerosene okay and uh, uh, this dodecan shows this interesting negative temperature coefficient now that is why it is important to understand the cool flame and this ntc phenomena because this dodecan or this large hydrocarbon uh, shows this very interesting negative temperature phenomena at these temperatures of choice which is this is about 1000 kelvin and this is about say 900 800 or, or 700 kelvin Okay. So, uh, from that point of view it is important to understand why this um, negative uh, temperature coefficient happens and why this cool flame phenomena happens because this is uh, this regime corresponds to a very interesting regime from a uh, uh, aeropropulsion engine uh, aeropropulsion combustor point of view and of course as you know the dodecan is a is a is a is a surrogate of chem of, of kerosene of jet a uh, and hence uh, we need to understand why what causes this. So, once again to recapitulate the negative temperature coefficient is that as your temperature increases in this direction in this 1000 by T uh, this uh, this kind of representation. So, the temperature increases in this direction. So, it is normal to expect that as temperature increases the ignition delay time reduces right because at higher temperature of course, the reaction rates increase and of course, as we have seen the chain branching reactions also increase. So, it is uh, reasonable to expect that at high temperatures uh, your um, uh, uh, the, 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 the ignition delay time will be less and it happens also it uh, reduces as we see here and for normal small hydrocarbons for methane it is like monotonic uh, it is goes uh, straight uh, uh, like this. Okay. But uh, you see here that uh, for this dodecan it first uh, decreases and then it increases and then it decreases and this decrease increase and decrease uh, with temperature or this negative temperature coefficient phenomena as we discussed can be only explained by detailed reaction mechanisms and cannot be explained by global one step reactions. And uh, we need to understand what causes this NTC phenomena because of its uh, uh, relevance to uh, 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 because of its uh, relevance to uh, to um, uh, jet A 
and uh, the temperature range is relevant in the uh, gas turbine as well as in the uh, uh, scramjet uh, combustors. This is where we were that the mechanism of cool flames and NTC. Uh, so, both are essentially the similar mechanism. So, what happens is that initiation uh, initially of course, this uh, R h and we can represent R by like uh, if it is dodecan R is essentially the formula for dodecan is C 12 H 24, uh, but R essentially can be C 12 H 23. Okay. Uh, it with H uh, when that R H reacts with uh, is uh, oxygen it becomes R and H O 2. So, this is uh, the initiation step okay. and then this R can now react with oxygen in presence of a third body and uh, not directly in presence the third body comes and hits the molecule uh, slightly afterwards and then it can form uh, essentially this RO2 and this M. Now, this RO2 that's formed can now react with this RH that is the actual fuel molecule and form this peroxide molecule that is RO2H plus R. Okay. This RO2H then can react with M that is the third body to form this RO plus OH plus M. The interesting thing is that this reaction this RO plus OH is because one uh, radical gives rise to this two radicals is essentially a chain branching reaction. Okay. So, that is this is very very important. Of course, this is also initiation reaction and this is also exothermic reaction uh, which are also important. Okay. But now, what happens is that at this is one way of course, uh, now what happens is that if the temperature goes beyond 600 Kelvin okay, instead of this reaction R 2 there is another alternative reaction between R and O 2. Okay. So, and that alternative reaction is this one that is at beyond at high temperatures beyond not at very high temperatures between 600 and 700 Kelvin this R plus O 2 instead of following instead of following this route it can react R plus O2 and it can form an olefin and HO2. Okay. And this guy this RH then essentially can react with HOH plus HO2 plus RO and it can form this sort of HO2, ROH, H2O2 etcetera. All right. Now, the thing is that because instead of because R3 is promoted and R2 is diminished let us see what the effect the diminishing of R 2 has. Now, if R 2 is diminished what see what we see is that if R 2 is diminished because essentially the reaction rate constant of R 2 decreases with temperature. Okay. It is essentially a third body reaction. So, if R 2 is diminished this reaction is diminished R O 2 formation of R O 2 is diminished a formation of R O 2 is diminished you see that uh, the formation of R O 2 H is diminished a formation of R O 2 H is diminished formation of R O plus O H is diminished. Okay. So, the chain branching step the key chain branching step in this reaction mechanism is essentially diminished and as a result if the chain branching step is diminished whether is this R 5 is diminished because of the diminishing of R 2 you see that of course, the reaction stops. Okay. Uh, the chain branching reaction essentially stops and as a result the temperature does not rise. Okay. Or the, or, or the ignition delays the temperature when the temperature rises between 600 and 700 Kelvin sorry uh, that when the temperature rises between 600 and 700 Kelvin your uh, ignition delay basically becomes bigger because now you do not have an active chain branching reaction in your reaction mechanism. Okay. Uh, now, uh, does it uh, continue forever? No, because when you increase the temperature to beyond 700 Kelvin you see this H2O2 uh, reacting with uh, in presence of a third body and is forming OH plus OH plus M. Okay. So, this is another chain branching reaction that comes along and as a result of which after 700 Kelvin the ignition delay temperature further can decrease. Okay. So, in this intermediate temperature range of 700 to 500 Kelvin you get uh, this thing if you plot it in 1000 by T and this is tau ig you get this kind of a thing. So, this uh, between this range is essentially explained by this thing that is in this range uh, what happens is that up to this range everything was going fine, but after this from this point onwards your uh, reaction 2 is uh, diminished and as a result of the thing that the chain branching reaction is diminished and uh, but after this uh, point uh, that is after about say 700 Kelvin uh, your there is another alternative chain branching reaction that pops up 
H2 plus M going to H plus H plus M and as a result your T ignition delay further uh, can reduce.